I was just hiking deep in the woods when I saw a dead body hidden amongst the trees. It was a gruesome sight. The corpse was covered in blood and had multiple stab wounds. Flies were buzzing around it, and maggots were crawling out of its eyes. I felt a surge of fear and nausea. I wondered who did this and why. I wondered if the killer was still nearby, watching me. I quickly turned and hiked back, hoping to get out of the woods as soon as possible. I didn't want to stay there any longer. I didn't want to be the next victim. I didn't want to get involved in this mess. I never told anyone about what I saw, because from what I know I'll be the one in trouble if I told anybody about this. I didn't have any proof for alibi. I didn't want to be accused of murder or become a suspect. I didn't want to deal with the police or the media. I just wanted to forget it ever happened. But I couldn't forget. The image of the dead body haunted me every night. I had nightmares and insomnia. I became paranoid and anxious. I started to see shadows and hear noises. I felt like someone was following me and watching me. I couldn't trust anyone. I couldn't live a normal life. I wished I never went hiking that day. I wished I never saw that dead body. I wished I could erase that memory from my mind. But I couldn't. And one day, I got a letter in the mail. It was a plain white envelope with no return address. Inside, there was a piece of paper with a single sentence written in red ink. I know what you saw in the woods. I don't know who sent me that note. But it still gives me chills. I had always wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail, ever since I read about it in a magazine. It seemed like the perfect way to escape the stress and monotony of my life in New York City. I had saved up enough money and vacation time to take a month off and do a solo hike from Georgia to Virginia. I was confident in my skills and equipment, and I was looking forward to the adventure. The first week of my hike was amazing. I met friendly fellow hikers, enjoyed the scenic views, and felt a sense of freedom and accomplishment. I followed the white blazes that marked the trail and camped at designated shelters or campsites. I was careful to hang my food bag away from bears and to filter my water from streams. I felt like I was living my dream. Things started to go wrong on the eighth day of my hike. I had reached a section of the trail that crossed the road and entered a dense forest. There was a sign that warned of a detour due to a bridge being out and directed hikers to follow a blue blaze side trail. I checked my map and saw that the detour would add a few miles to my day, but I decided to follow it anyway. I didn't want to risk crossing a swollen river or getting lost. I turned onto the Blue Blaze Trail and entered the woods. The trail was narrow and overgrown, and I had to push my way through branches and bushes. The forest was dark and silent, and I felt a chill in the air. I looked at my watch and saw that it was already past noon. I wondered how long the detour would take, and if I would make it to the next shelter before dark. I walked for what seemed like hours, but I saw no sign of the trail rejoining the main one. I started to get worried. I checked my map and compass, but I couldn't figure out where I was. The blue blazes were faded and sporadic, and I wasn't sure if I was still on the right path. I tried to calm myself and reason that I would eventually find the trail, or the road and that someone would come along to help me. I kept walking, hoping for a sign of civilization. But the forest only got thicker and darker, and the trail only got rougher and steeper. I stumbled over roots and rocks, and scratched myself on thorns and briars. I felt like I was going in circles, and that the forest was closing in on me. I started to panic. I shouted for help, but no one answered. I was alone and lost. I checked my watch again and saw that it was almost 5 p.m. The sun was setting, and the forest was getting darker by the minute. I knew I had to find a place to camp for the night, and hope for a better luck in the morning. I looked around for a flat and clear spot, but all I saw were trees and bushes. I decided to settle for a small clearing next to a large boulder. I dropped my backpack and set up my tent. I was too tired and hungry to cook so I just ate a granola bar and drank some water. I crawled into my sleeping bag and tried to sleep. I couldn't sleep. I was cold and scared, and I heard strange noises in the night. 
I heard rustling and snapping, and I imagined animals or worse lurking in the shadows. I heard howling and growling, and I wondered if there were wolves or coyotes nearby. I heard whispering and laughing, and I feared that there were people or ghosts watching me. I zipped up my tent and closed my eyes, but I couldn't block out the sounds. I prayed for the night to end. I don't know when I fell asleep, but I woke up to a loud thud. I opened my eyes and saw that it was still dark. I looked at my watch and saw that it was 3 a.m. I wondered what had made the noise, and I felt a surge of fear. I grabbed my flashlight and unzipped my tent. I shone the light outside and gasped. There was a man standing next to my tent. He was tall and thin, and he wore a dirty and torn flannel shirt and jeans. He had long and greasy hair and a scraggly beard. He had a crazed look in his eyes and a wicked smile on his lips. He held a large axe in his hands, and he had just slammed it into the boulder next to my tent. He looked at me and said, Hello there, hiker. I've been waiting for you. I screamed and scrambled out of my tent. I grabbed my backpack and ran. I didn't care where I was going, I just wanted to get away from him. I heard him laugh and chase after me. He shouted, Don't run, hiker. You can't escape me. I know these woods better than you. I've been living here for years. I've been hunting hikers like you for fun. You're my prey, hiker. And I'm going to catch you and kill you. I ran as fast as I could, but he was faster. He caught up with me and swung his axe at me. I dodged and ducked, but he was relentless. He slashed and hacked, and I felt his blade cut my flesh. I bled and cried, but he didn't stop. He said, You're mine, hiker. You're mine. I don't know how long he chased me, or how far I ran. I don't know how many times he hit me, or how many wounds I had. I only know that I was in pain and terror, and that I wanted to live. I prayed for a miracle, and I got one. I saw a light in the distance. I saw a car on the road. I saw a chance to survive. I ran towards the light, and I screamed for help. I saw the car stop, and I saw a man get out. I saw him look at me, and I saw him look at the man with the axe. I saw him pull out a gun, and I saw him shoot the man with the axe. I saw the man with the axe fall to the ground, and I saw him stop moving. I saw the man with the gun run towards me, and I saw him call 911. I saw him wrap me in a blanket, and I saw him tell me that I was safe. I saw him smile, and I saw him say, Don't worry, hiker. You're going to be okay. I passed out. I woke up in a hospital. I saw a doctor and a nurse. I saw bandages and stitches. I saw an four and a monitor. I saw a police officer and a reporter. I saw my family and friends. I saw them all, and I heard them all. I heard them tell me that I was lucky to be alive. I heard them tell me that I was a hero. I heard them tell me that I had survived a serial killer. I heard them tell me that I had saved many lives. I heard them tell me that I was amazing. I didn't feel amazing. I felt traumatized. I felt pain and fear. After this experience, I never hiked again. I always loved camping, especially near my house. There was a beautiful spot with trees and a stream where I could relax and enjoy nature. I decided to spend a night there, just me and my tent. I packed some food, water, a flashlight, and a sleeping bag. I was looking forward to a peaceful night under the stars. I arrived at the spot around 6 p.m. and set up my tent. I made a small fire and cooked some noodles. I ate them while watching the sunset. It was a lovely evening. I felt calm and happy. I decided to go to bed early, so I could wake up early and watch the sunrise. I put out the fire and crawled into my tent. I zipped it up and snuggled into my sleeping bag. I fell asleep quickly. I don't know what time it was when I woke up, but it was still dark. I felt a sudden urge to pee. I groaned and reached for my flashlight. I unzipped my tent and stepped out. It was cold and quiet. I could see the moon and the stars in the sky. I walked a few meters away from my tent 
and found a spot behind a bush. I pulled down my pants and started to pee. That's when I heard it. A horrifying, terrifying roar. It sounded like a mix of a lion and a bear, but louder and angrier. It came from somewhere behind me, not too far away. I froze in fear. I felt a warm liquid running down my legs. I realized I had peed myself. I didn't care. I just wanted to get away from that sound. I pulled up my pants and ran towards my tent. I didn't look back. I didn't want to see what made that roar. I reached my tent and dove inside. I zipped it up and grabbed my flashlight. I turned it on and pointed it at the entrance. I waited for something to attack me, but nothing happened. I didn't hear the roar again. I didn't hear anything. It was silent. Too silent. I wondered if it was still out there, watching me, waiting for me to come out. I wondered if it was a prank, someone trying to scare me. I wondered if I was dreaming. I didn't sleep that night. I stayed awake, clutching my flashlight until the sun came up. I peeked outside my tent. I saw no sign of anything unusual. No footprints, no blood, no fur. Nothing. It looked like a normal morning. I packed up my stuff and got out of there. I didn't want to stay any longer. I didn't want to find out what made that roar. I still don't know what it was. Maybe it was a prank. Maybe it was a dream. Maybe it was a wild animal. Maybe it was something else. Something worse. I don't know. And I don't want to know. I never went camping near my house again. I never went camping anywhere again. I had always wanted to go camping in Montana, one of the best states for camping in America. I had heard so much about its beautiful scenery, abundant wildlife, and vast wilderness. I decided to take a week off from work and drive to Scott State Park, a 1,280-acre park with a lake, a historic lighthouse, and several hiking trails. I thought it would be the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the park in the afternoon and set up my tent near the lake. The park was not very crowded, probably because it was late September and the weather was getting colder. I saw a few other campers in RVs, but they were far enough that I felt like I had some privacy. I cooked some dinner on my portable stove and watched the sunset over the lake. It was a peaceful and serene scene. I decided to go for a walk around the lake before going to bed. I grabbed my flashlight and headed out. The night was dark and quiet, except for the occasional sound of crickets and frogs. I enjoyed the fresh air and the starry sky. I walked for about half an hour, then turned back to my campsite. As I was walking, I noticed a strange sound coming from the woods. It sounded like a low, guttural moan, followed by a loud thud. I stopped and listened, wondering what it could be. A bear? A deer? A person? I felt a chill run down my spine. I decided to quicken my pace and get back to my tent as soon as possible. I reached my campsite and breathed a sigh of relief. I saw my tent, my car, and my belongings. Everything looked normal. I zipped up my tent and got inside. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal. I shrugged and put it away. I was too tired to care. I crawled into my sleeping bag and closed my eyes. I was about to fall asleep when I heard it again. The same moan and thud, only louder and closer. It sounded like it was right outside my tent. I froze in fear. What was that? What did it want? I reached for my flashlight and turned it on. I pointed it at the tent wall, hoping to see a shadow or a shape. But I saw nothing. Just the faint outline of the trees and the stars. I heard another moan and thud, followed by a scraping sound. It sounded like something was dragging something heavy across the ground. I felt a surge of panic. I grabbed my knife and held it in my hand. I was ready to fight or run, whatever it took to survive. I waited for the thing to come closer, to attack, to reveal itself. But it never did. The sound stopped. The silence returned. I lay there, trembling, for what seemed like an eternity. I didn't dare to move or make a sound. 
I didn't know if the thing was gone or still there, watching me. I wished I had someone with me, someone to talk to, someone to help me. But I was alone. Alone in the dark, with a monster. I don't know how long I stayed like that, but eventually I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning, feeling groggy and sore. I opened my eyes and saw the sunlight shining through the tent. I felt a wave of relief. It was over. It was just a bad dream. I got out of my tent and stretched. I looked around and saw nothing out of the ordinary. No signs of a struggle, no blood, no tracks. Nothing. I packed up my stuff and got in my car. I decided to leave the park and go home. I didn't want to stay there any longer. I didn't want to find out what that thing was. I didn't want to hear that sound again. I drove away, feeling shaken and confused. I tried to forget the whole thing, to convince myself that it was just my imagination, that I was just paranoid. But I couldn't. I still can't. Because every night, when I close my eyes I hear it. The moan and the thud. The scraping and the silence. And I wonder. What was it? Where did it come from? Why did it stop? And most of all, will it ever come back? I always loved camping, especially in the wilderness of Montana. It was one of the best states for camping, according to some websites. There were so many hiking trails, national parks, and scenic views to enjoy. I decided to spend a week at Scott State Park, a 1,280-acre park with a lake, a historic spring, and a sandstone canyon. It sounded like the perfect place to relax and reconnect with nature. I arrived at the park on a sunny afternoon and set up my tent near the lake. The park was not very crowded, probably because it was off-season. I saw a few other campers in RVs, but they were far enough that I felt like I had some privacy. I cooked some dinner on my camp stove and watched the sunset over the water. It was beautiful and peaceful. The next day, I decided to explore the park and do some hiking. I packed some snacks, water, and a map and headed to the trailhead. The park had several trails of different lengths and difficulties, but I chose the longest and most challenging one. It was a 10-mile loop that went around the lake, through the canyon, and up to a lookout point. I figured it would take me about five hours to complete. The hike was amazing. I saw all kinds of wildlife, plants, and rock formations. The lake was clear and blue, the canyon was deep and rugged, and the lookout point offered a stunning view of the whole park. I took plenty of pictures and enjoyed the fresh air and sunshine. I felt like I was in heaven. I finished the hike around 4 p.m. and headed back to my campsite. I was tired but happy. I decided to take a nap in my tent before making some dinner. I zipped up my sleeping bag and closed my eyes. I don't know how long I slept, but I woke up to a strange sound. It was a low, rumbling noise like thunder. I opened my eyes and looked outside. It was dark and cloudy. The wind was blowing hard and the trees were swaying. I checked my phone and saw that it was 8 p.m. I must have slept longer than I thought. I got out of my tent and looked around. The park was deserted. All the other campers and RVs were gone. I wondered if they had left because of the storm or if there was some other reason. I felt a sudden chill in the air. I decided to pack up my stuff and leave too. I didn't want to spend the night in a storm, alone in the park. I quickly stuffed my tent, sleeping bag, and other gear into my backpack. I grabbed my flashlight and turned it on. I headed to the parking lot, where I had left my car. It was about a mile away from my campsite, along a dirt road. I hoped my car was still there and that it would start. As I walked, the sound of thunder grew louder and more frequent. I saw flashes of lightning in the sky. I quickened my pace, hoping to reach my car before the rain started. I was halfway there when I heard another sound. It was a scream. It was a high-pitched, blood-curling scream, like someone in pain or terror. It came from behind me, from the direction of the lake. I stopped and turned around. I shone my flashlight at the lake, but I couldn't see anything. The scream echoed in the night followed by a splash. 
I felt a surge of fear and curiosity. What was that? Who was that? Was someone in trouble? Did they fall into the lake? Did something attack them? I didn't know what to do. Should I go back and check? Should I call for help? Should I run to my car? I decided to go back and check. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe it was a prank. Maybe it was an animal. But maybe it was someone who needed my help. I couldn't just ignore it. I had to find out. I turned around and ran back to the lake. I followed the sound of the scream, hoping to find the source. I reached the shore and scanned the water with my flashlight. I saw nothing but waves and ripples. I called out, Hello? Is anyone there? Do you need help? There was no answer. Only silence. I felt a cold sweat on my forehead. I wondered if I had imagined the scream. Maybe I was dreaming. Maybe I was hallucinating. Maybe I was going crazy. I was about to turn around and leave when I saw something move in the water. It was a dark shape, about the size of a person. It was swimming towards me fast. I couldn't make out any details, but I could tell it was not human. It had a long, slender body, a pointed head, and a tail. It looked like a giant snake or eel. I felt a surge of panic and horror. What the hell was that? What did it want? Was it the thing that screamed? Was it the thing that attacked someone? I didn't want to find out. I turned around and ran. I ran as fast as I could, away from the lake, away from the creature, away from the park. I reached the parking lot and saw my car. It was the only one left. I ran to it and opened the door. I threw my backpack in the back seat and got in. I slammed the door and locked it. I put the key in the ignition and turned it and drove away from there.